Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, as always, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. And in today's episode, we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 8 content and today playing another rental team from one of you fine viewers who has submitted their teams. Thank you again to everyone who has submitted a team and I will be featuring more rental teams as we go through this week, as well as some teams that I'm putting together myself uh, that I think are more relevant in the format right now at the minute. But today as i say we've got a rental code and it is from reuben priestley so thank you very much reuben it's a pleasure to uh, have you submitting a team and especially a xerneas one something that we don't see played too much at the moment so here's a rental team for anyone that wants to try this team out for themselves as always we'll jump into it we'll have a couple of games with the team on the ladder and then i'll throw the rental team up at the end so very excited we've got the thunderous there not the assault vest variant that you kind of commonly seen in the format at the minute but the life orb just to get, get that bit more power and uh, a nice option with foul play because Ruben mentioned in his comments that it was good against things like Metagross or Galeo and things like that and also the Dark Max move as well but you can take advantage of that move when you're not Dynamaxed so to really take advantage of anything like boosting and powering up but the Max Darkness there is always very useful. The Indeedy support helps pretty much everything on the team as we know it brings the Psychic Terrain and also has that Follow Me so uh, it's a really nice option especially with the Safety Goggles to pull away any Sleep Threats. You've got the, the Xerneas there we know what it does but funny enough got uh, Psyshock over Moonblast what you would normally see so taking advantage of the Geomancy I like the the Psyshock on here I think you've seen it played in previous formats but it was never the most optimal option maybe this is a, a better way to run Xerneas now Ruben did get to rank 13th on the ladder with this team so it has got a lot of potential I think it's got all the right elements in it you've got that Sun mode the fast mode there with the Venusaur and then you've got a really good Trick Room switch mode with the Stack Attacker the Torkoal and that Ndidi support so really excited to play this team like i say hopefully you enjoy today's episode and without further ado friends let's get into this first one today okay up first today we have a zapdos tokol galarian moltres mimikyu uh, kyoga and incineroar team um all right well i mean they've got they've got definitely a trick room mode with the mimikyu tokol and potentially the kyoga depending on the speed uh stat of that pokemon but it's one of those where it's middle middling speed here can take advantage of the tail the airstream support i should say from either glarian moltres or the zapdos or it can take advantage of the trick room through the mimikyu mimikyu there as well to kind of help mitigate trick room either with taunt or just resetting the trick room itself um can Xerneas do a job here? I feel like Xerneas can do a really decent job here. You know, it's going to be faster than everything on my opponent's side of the field. We've got the free kind of uh, Geomancy. Um, there's not really too much my opponent can do other than potentially fake out from the Incineral. But I mean, even then, it's not the worst. And what we could potentially do as well is lead Xerneas and Didi and kind of have something like stacker in the back to kind of bait maybe a trick room setup from the Mimikyu if we do see it lead you know um what's our last pokemon gonna be i i kind of like venusaur but uh especially because the torkoal uh could maybe see some play here uh but venu venu does all right but probably thunderous is going to be the better option you know uh in general i think just got to be careful around the speed tiering from my opponent. I don't think that the, the um, I don't see uh, the Galarian Moltres coming to this one. I could definitely see the Zapdos coming. Um, and that will outspeed Xerneas, of course, but we do have the redirection. I'm surprised. I am very surprised to see. Um, I am very surprised to see the... Um, the Galarian Ultras. Now it may go for a Max Airstream here, and we might see that, and a Water Spout. The, the, one problem could be, you know, Scarfed Kyogre, um, which could smack us before we're able to get the Geomancy up. Now that would be a little bit of an issue, but with the Geomancy up, um, we've not really got Torkoal. Like, Torkoal here would have been great. Switch in Torkoal, get the Geomancy, and then we're, we're in the... Uh, we're in the money then, but um, kind of tempted to keep in DD. Do I attack? Because I could just get some chip onto the... The thing is, the Kyogre is going to be difficult to take down. But, I mean, if we get the Geomancy up here, what are they going to do with the, the, the Moltres? Maybe Nasty Plot. Um, we don't want to dazzle just in case there is a... 
I think we could expand in force just to get damage onto the Kyogre here because really if the if we do see a nasty plot then at least the next turn you know we're still going to take an absolute ton of damage from this water spout here but I think the next turn if they do nasty plot we've got to max and go after the Moltres um, because those airstreams are still going to be doing a ton of damage to us. Let's see what the Ogre does. And just getting damage onto the Ogre now. Okay, Origin Pulse. Better than Water Spout, to be honest. Didi does take it. Xerneas takes it pretty well. And we do get the Taunt now, but it's a little bit too late for us. So kind of maybe hoping that we would be a little bit slower um, than the Moltres. But max speed zone is always the best zone. So that expanding force damage is actually really nice here. Because now we can just max. Go Starfall into Moltres um, and I think we just sack I think we just sack Ndidi here because then it would open the door for a spring Venusaur in uh, to put a little bit more pressure onto that that um, Kyogre and there's no way we don't take down the Moltres here I mean even if it maxes which I doubt it will but might do, might do, might do. But we should still be able to take it down with a, a Starfall. The only issue is we lose the Psychic Terrain, so Expanding Force, if we do manage to get one off, I don't see us being able to get an Expanding Force off here. Um, but I want to try and mitigate the, the speed control options that my opponent has, you see. So that's the, the, the Moltres going here means that they've lost an option of airstream support for that Kyogre and we could definitely see something like the Mimikyu come onto the field and try and set up a, a trick room and the Origin Pulse does avoid the Xerneas which is a, a, a huge bonus for us you know like taking less damage is always good especially with your kind of main Pokemon don't even have Venusaur I brought yeah forget I uh, I went for the Thunderous in our last slot which is fine because I mean we can target down the the um we can go double tap into the Mimikyu here because I think again it's the it's where the speed control is going to come from and even if we lose Thunderous here uh, I think it's kind of worthwhile and there's a likelihood that um the Kyogre may protect to try and get the trick room up just because of the pressure that the Thunderous is putting on so I think a wild charge will br uh, or uh, I don't know I don't know actually I don't think we're going to be able to beat we really need it to be the other way around, you know. We need the, yeah, we needed the um, the Xerneas to be hitting after the Thunderous because I don't think a Wild Charge is going to be enough to get it. And it looks like the Kyogre is going to actually max here, which is interesting. So, um, maybe looking at this not in the best light. And I think they do set the Trick Room, but again, ah, uh, this is the, no. We should have went after the Kyogre when we had the opportunity. I think. Yeah, because we're wasting it. We're wasting an attack here into the Mimikyu because there's no way. A what? Mm, life orb, wild charge. Is it going to be enough? It depends how the Mimikyu's trained. In all honesty, it really does. Because thunderous with a life orb, stab, wild charge can do a chunk of damage. If we can get rid of it here, that's big. But yeah, not not enough. Not enough. And the trick room's going to go up, and we're going to be knackered because Kyogre is now going to go into the thunderous. I'd imagine, and then we're going to see the trick room set up. Yeah, but I mean stack attacker to come in. Uh, it's a bit clunky how we're doing this, but it's not really the best, you know. Um, Should have went after the Kyogre, just removed that from the field right now. I mean, we're going to be able to the next turn. We might lose stacker in the process if the Trick Room does. Go yeah, the Trick Room going up. Um, hmm. Okay, let's see. Does Mimikyu go down to whatever stack attacker throws out at us? Um... We could even preserve Stacker for a turn, you know, and like we could potentially just go Starfall into Kyogre. Protect, have we got Stacker? We've got Protect on it. I don't know if we have got Protect on it. No, so we're going to have to, oh, we've got no, uh, okay. Um... I mean, we could reverse the trick room, but I don't think we're going to be able to. The only option is to really gyro ball. We're probably going to lose Stacker to Kyogre here. Because without Rock Slide, right? Rock Slide gets double damage. But I mean, this is a bit more 
uh, guaranteed where we're not relying on like low accuracy attacks to, to pick up the Mimikyu here. Mm. And the reason I didn't attack into the Kyogre is I really felt like, you know, the the, um, the Protect there would have been the better option. Or at least uh, the Max. A max Guard, you know. Because I think one Starfall here will get the Kyogre. The Rain's not even up now to boost these attacks. Now they're going to get the Max Geyser off, but I don't. it's not going to be enough to get... Yeah, they're going into Zern. It's not the play. You need to go after the stack up in the Trick Room. So... This is why, like, a Starfall here should pick up the, the Kyogre, and then because we've got the Trick Room up now, it's kind of benefiting us in, on both aspects of the, um, like, both speed tier dimension. You know, got the slowest of the slow, and we've got the fastest of the fast. So whatever comes in, we, we know we're going to be able to, to hit them for at least decent damage, and our taunt wearing off just in time as well as our max turns end. So we've got a, a Protect if we need to in these latter turns of this Trick Room. Tokol, okay. Now the sun's going to come up. Mm. The problem with not having... Um, I mean, the thing is, they're going to click They're going to click Eruption or they're going to click Heat Wave. So the Y God here, this is where like Rock Slide would come in really useful. But we do have the option to go Psy Shock and just Y God here, which is nice support because then the next turn we can protect the Xerneas uh, if they go for a single target attack. Um... And potentially get a body slam off because all we've got to do is stall out this trick room. It worse comes to worse. Uh, but yeah, it's stacker. I can understand the wide guard. It's really useful. It, and especially situations like this, it's very situational. Like it's really useful here. But you kind of need, personally, I think, I think you need a rock stab to really take advantage. Um, because Torkoal is quite a popular Pokemon in this format. Um, and it's hard because you, you, you can see where. Ruben's coming from where he's got the Trick Room option, the Y God support, and then he's got Body Press where you don't have to rely too much on attack stat in general. Um, and then Gyro Ball, which is just a generally very good good option. Um, now do we Wide Guard again? Because, you know, sometimes these Torkoals will only have access to, like, spread attacks, you know? How many turns of um, Trick Room have we got left as well? Too. So we could attack here. I think we probably take an attack with, and we could just wide guard again, because it's like a single target attack like Earth Power. It's not going to take down Xerneas, and I don't even think a flamethrower will. Yeah, they got Heat Wave. That's all they've got. That's all they've got. Um, so they may have Earth Power, potentially, but the wide guard here just locking my opponent out at the moment and the uh, side shock, because it's hitting on the defense stat. Because Torkoal is really defensively built, it uh, it makes it a bit more difficult. And I think a body press now will be um, enough to get it, so we don't need to to lock in with with the wide guard, and this should be enough to get it. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Good game to my opponent. It was a bit of around the houses, you know. I think I made the one mistake I made was the Mimikyu. Um, just. Whether if, if we'd been able to hit it first with the Thunderous and then nuke it with the Zern, that would have been the better play. Now, I think in that situation, what I should have done is I should have targeted the Kyogre with the Max Starfall and switched into Stack Attacker there. And then we would have had a way better way to kind of close that game out, you know. Unfortunately, I didn't do that. Um, but the, you've got to review matches. It's always useful doing that. But I think overall, in the end, the team kind of came through. We got the Xerneas working as well, which is a bonus. So uh, all good. Very good game to my opponent. Hopefully you enjoyed that first one. We'll jump into our second one of today. Okay, up next, we've got a Zacian, Charizard, Venusaur, Garchomp, Torkoal, and Whimsicott team. We've got the Hot Dog team. Hot Dog is here. Um, so Sun and Zacian going to be very difficult, obviously. Uh, Xerneas does not like Zacian one little bit. It doesn't really like Charizard or Venusaur in the sun. So it's going to be difficult to utilize uh, the Xerneas in this match for sure. Um, you get rid of those three though. You, you, you're in a good spot. You're in a good spot. I mean Trick Room here for us isn't too bad. It is a little bit tricky with the Torkoal knowing that we've not got a Rock Stab. Uh, Venusaur... Could be decent, but against the Charizard, not so good. I think our best option here is Thunderous, in all honesty. Um, so Thunderous, does Venusaur have Sleep Powder? Because that could give us some options, I guess, if it does. But then we've got to worry about the... Uh, it does have Sleep Powder, yeah. 
You've got to worry about the maybe safety goggles on the, the Charizard. But I mean with Thunderous there, we're not in the worst position. And we could also go on Didi as well if we worry about like Venusaur coming out as a lead. I would imagine we'll probably see something more like Torkoal Charizard as a lead. Um, I'm going to bring Torkoal in the back here. I know Didi would be really useful, but I think... Um, I think I want to bring Xerneas to this anyway. Um, but I think Venu Torkoal could be a really good mod for us in this one. I think it's just about removing, like mitigating the Charizard early on. Because the Charizard's the biggest threat, like by far. But the thing is, with the Charizard, the, the bonus that we've got to deal with Charizard, you know, the Assault Vest variant of Thunderous sometimes isn't powerful enough to get the um, Charizard when it maxes. The Life Orb gives you just that a little bit of additional power that you kind of need to be able to uh, to get it. Problem is here, of course, is you've got the Whimsicott support, which is, is uh, very difficult because it is going to mean that uh, they're going to outspeed us and be able to kind of nuke us before we're able to get an attack off. Now, the the one option we do have, potentially, it's not really ideal by any means, is maxing uh, Venusaur, uh, just Sleep Powder, Venusaur, into the Charizard, switch Thunderous into Torkoal. Now, that could be an option, and it could give us a bit of room for maybe later on in the game. And I think maybe it's it's a little bit risky, but I don't want to take an attack from Charizard just yet. If we can do this and then get Thunderous back onto the field to deal with the Charizard, stall out some of these Tailwind turns, which you're expecting coming from the Whimsicott now, might be a good way to uh, approach this. The problem is if the, the Tailwind goes up here, obviously, then uh, the Charizard are going to be able to attack anyway. They're probably going to target the Venusaur. So that means that we'll probably lose Venusaur. Torkoal will be fine. But if we can just put this Charizard to sleep right now, it doesn't matter if we lose the Venusaur or not. It means we get the uh, Thunderous back in that can deal with this Charizard a little bit more freely. Not worry about the Tailwind being up as well. So we'll see. Is it Tailwind? That's why you kind of need... Mm, I mean, we could have went for a Trick Room here. Could have went Stacker and Didi. Um... This is what I mean. They're going after the Venusaur. So we could have really, in hindsight, maxed Thunderous here. Just went after the, the Zard. But again, if we get the Sleep Powder onto it, it frees us up a bit more, you know, and it makes it difficult for my opponent to take advantage of their Tailwind turns. It gives us a chance to kind of work a little bit more on on the, uh, the Whimsicott. And we could also potentially get Xerneas in, although Xerneas is not the most optimal Pokemon. I think what we've got to try and concentrate down on first is probably getting rid of the Charizard while, while it's asleep, you know? Max, go Max Lightning and Eruption. It, it, they're going to be the options, I think, that we have to go for. I would say as well, there's an argument for going like Airstream here because you've got to think there is probably a Venusaur in the back. And if there is, and it's got sleep powder, it gives us a lot of, it gives us a bit of a headache. So getting that airstream up now would be a good option, but the Charizard ain't going to be asleep forever. So that's the thing. We've got to take care of it sooner rather than later, because we can't afford to take any more attacks from it in the sun. Now it will have that guaranteed sleep turn this turn. So we're taking the, making the most out of a, like the trade off of Venusaur almost um, in this situation. So let's see what we can do. I can say we should be able to remove the Zard from the field. Fake Tears coming out into... Yeah, you don't want to go after the... Oh, you have went after the... Oh, no, no, you went after the Torkoal. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's all right. That's all right, yeah. I was like, you haven't you haven't went after the, the Thunderous, have you? Because if you have, then we're like super powered. Super power. Um, the Tailwind being up as well is not ideal. <clears throat> but there could be worse there could be worse situations we're going to get an eruption off here into the Whimsicott we want to take it down as well the beauty about being able to take Whimsicott down the following turn uh, which we should be able to do is that then the Tailwind runs out the next turn it means they haven't got Tailwind anymore which is which is ideal so we can double up into it you know eruption max airstream into that slot depending on what comes out onto the field um, just to make sure that that Tailwind is not an option because then it comes down to Xerneas coming in in the late game, doesn't it? And if we're faster than everything else, then it makes it 
a lot more possible. Now with the electric terrain up on the field, this does help us out a bunch. Um, does the Whimsicott have... Oh, the problem is here that they've they've got the fake tears and now Torkoal is in a, a lot of trouble, you know? We know the Sash isn't on the Venusaur, but it's probably got Sleep Powder. But it's where do they go? Do we lose Torkoal? Or do we get put to sleep with Tornate Thunderous? Now I think I'm going to go Eruption here. I'm going to have to just attack because... They put us to sleep, it means we get the eruption off. Yeah. Which is great, okay? So, you should be able to clear the field now. Now, Moonblast is going to do more because we're minus two, but still... Oh, man, that does way more than what I expected. But we'll be able to get the rid of the... Um, rid of the Whammy. And do a good, sizable chunk to this Venusaur. Actually remove it as well. So that's, yeah, that's what I mean. That trade-off there is definitely worth it. Because at the end of the day, they've got no speed control now. And although Thunderous is asleep, we're still getting some some kind of return on, on our options there, you know? Rather than just saying, oh, well, we'll protect Torkoal because we've already been fake fake tears ah this is this is tricky oh this is tricky although the, the you know the special defense drops don't matter too much uh with tokol but tokol is like a big player here you know it, it and i think they did they go after the thunderous i don't know we've got to just max lightning i think here and hope that we wake up i think that's the big play because Torkoal is the one thing that can really threaten Zacian. And I would say you would target the Torkoal right now if you were Zacian. Yeah. Come on, Thunderous, wake up. Come on, we just need that wake up. Come on, we need that wake up. Come on, wake up. Yeah, Torkoal is so important to us. Now, the, the Tailwind does end, but obviously Zacian being like the super most powerful, fastest Pokemon uh, on the field at the moment makes things a bit easier for us now can we take it sacred sword i believe we can our defense hasn't been altered at all i think we can do this with a wild charge and a burning jealousy i'm hoping that like toko okay there we go we'll take it we'll take it we beat the zassian we didn't have the xerneas it was sitting waiting in the back that was all we needed tricky game of course but i think toko had enough health there just to be able to take a sacred sword would have taken a behemoth blade because of that big defense stat that it's got there it kind of makes it easier so we've had two great games with the team thank you again to ruben we'll jump over now just to remind you guys of that rental team for today's uh team that we've played <laughs> Okay, friends, here is the rental for today's team. Again, thank you to Ruben for providing this rental. And if you guys have any rental teams that you would like to see featured on the channel, do throw them down in the comment section below and I'll make sure to feature them as soon as I am able to. So we've got the Thunderous there, the Xerneas, Venusaur, Tokol, Stacker, and Ndidi, all the Pokemon we featured today, they've all done their little part in some way, form, or another. The Venusaur there, putting the Charizard to sleep in that last one, kind of being a sacrifice, but it was worth it in the long run because it meant that we were able to kind of open up the game and go from there. But sometimes you've got to just do that. I think it's a good example of showing in games where, you know, you're in a sticky spot, but you've got still two options, and if one option doesn't come off, you're still getting a return with the other one, and not to play a little bit more preserved where you're protecting something in fear of it getting knocked out or getting put to sleep and not getting a return the other one now you're getting down a 50 50 route there whereas guaranteeing yourself a return no matter what your opponent does is always a good way to look at it so i guess that was a good turn anyway hopefully you've enjoyed today's games uh hopefully you've enjoyed today's team and um again thank you so much for tuning in as always friends have a great rest of your day and i'll see you all for before I trash this mic anymore. I'll see you all for another episode very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.